very much. Good day, dear colleagues and friends. My name is Anna, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today and look forward to your participation. I request all the delegates and participants to take part in the activities to come up with. We also ask speakers to keep their time limited from three to four minutes. Thank you for your participation. And the first hour. Um, report, uh, which I also um, have uh, considered a great honor uh, to welcome Dr. and Professor Alexander Korishin and Natalia Sviridyuk, which this topic activities of illegal weapons, criminal components of cyber threat. Please welcome. Thank you, Anna. One minute, please. Good day, everyone. My name is Alexander Karistin. I am Dr. Science Law Professor. I am Chief Research Scientist of the State Scientific Research Institute of the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. And I would like to present you with my colleague, uh, Dr. Science Professor to Sviriduk Natalia. Um, activities of illegal weapons criminal component of Hybrid threats. Deeper in the theoretical and methodological foundation of the study of hybrid threats in Ukraine, scientists of the State Research Institute of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine launched a systematic research project based on unique empirical basis in order to implement the general concept of strategic analysis of hybrid threats in the civil security sector and appropriate modeling and forecasting based on risk assessment of the threats spreading, as well as the ability to reduce this risk. First of all, it is important to identify specific group of hybrid threats. Based on the factor analysis within the statistical test of our hypothesis, the groups with the largest share of the explained difference of some groups of hybrid threats were identified. Using additional expert assessment of hybrid threats content and their distribution environment, essential perception of hybrid threats with the subsequent distribution into six groups is formed, which are characterized uh, as follows. Hybrid threats related to the informative environment Hybrid threats associated with the use of cyber operations. Hybrid threats related to the spread of criminality. Hybrid threats related to provoke civil disobedience, violation of public order. Hybrid threats related to the CAF activities, critical infrastructure facilities. And uh, hybrid threats related to corruption. Uh, thus, uh, the hypothesis uh, that there is a group of hybrid threats associated with criminality spreading has its confirmation and this area needs more thorough study. Uh, the empirical basis and system of indicators by which hybrid threats were identified and accessed signifies 31 types of hybrid threats associated with criminality spreading. The most dangerous hybrid threats in the field of civil security associated with criminality spreading based on risk assessment of the spread up, subversive acts in warehouse arsenal of ammunition, 59%, provoking separatism, 58%, Activities of illegal armed groups, 55%, and uh, illicit trafficking in reinforced concrete weapons, ammunition, explosive, 55%. The further analysis focuses on the activities of illegal armed groups on 100 threats, a uh, fairly high level of prolif uh, proliferation risk. It was uh, identified based on the correlation analysis, the factor that have a certain statistical relationship with this threat. Only 55 indicators are characterized by a certain statistical relationship with the threat of illegal outputs of the general list of indicators 100, 152 
that characterize the effectiveness of the law enforcement system in combating hybrid threats. Along with these research results, it remains important the identification of key factors affecting identified hybrid threat and they are prior on in reducing the spread and risk of the hybrid threat. For this purpose, we have built a model of linear regression by the method of stepwise inclusion, stepwise exclusion, and search for the best subsets. The most optimal model of linear regression identifies the two most significant correlates of the activities of illegal armed groups. Deployed as a request of the government of Ukraine of the Yuan, uh, and uh, allow wages of lower le level employees. In addition, the constructed model uh, of uh, linear regression makes it possible to calculate a forecast for reducing the risk of illegal armed groups as hybrid threat in the civil security sector, provided uh, the amplification ability deployed at the request of the government of Ukraine of, uh, of the EU um, and reduction uh, vulnerability allow wages of low level employees by 20%. Thus, uh, based on the linear regression model, the risk of the spread of illegal armed groups, given the existing level of ability and uh, vulnerability is assessed and priority factors for reduce uh, this risk uh, are identical. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? If anyone have, has questions, you can write in the chat and I will write if you don't want to ask it in online. You have any questions? We have no questions, so we will go the next, uh, the next up. And uh, at this stage, I would like to introduce Natal, uh, Tatiana Kaganovska, Dmitry Flinko, with the report Criminal Delinquency as the Object of Scientific Researches, Problems and Projects. Please. Dear colleagues, uh, participants of our uh, English speaking conference, we are glad to take part in this important event. Uh, my name is uh, Dmitry Slinko. Uh, I am Associate Professor of Criminal Law Department of Karadin Kharkov National University. Uh, let me introduce uh, Tatiana Kaganovska, Doctor of Law, Professor, Dean Faculty of Law, Karadin Kharkov National University. Uh, we have prepared this scientific research together. And uh, now about uh, introduction of the article, uh, uh, we try to be brief. Introduction, uh, the uh, relevance of the article includes consideration of the theoretical and practical problems of crime. The current criminal uh, and procedural legislation are aimed uh, at combating criminal offenses and misconduct that, that are committed against state and public foundation as well as individual citizens. The state has taken care of protecting the rights, freedoms, and interests of human in the society. Therefore, it's impossible to get around such an important aspect of the criminal legal phenomenon as delinquency. Scientific points of view uh, determine the concept of uh, crime as an unlawful social and legal phenomenon. One of the main social tasks uh, of modern society is the possible limitation of criminal delinquency in the reduction in society. It must be uh, noted that criminal delinquency is an object of study of a number of social sciences. Each of it, uh, its sides is considered by uh, specific humanitarian and legal sciences and uh, acts as a subject of research. <clears throat> Theoretical conditions. Um, uh, theoretical conditions um, are based on the points of view of uh, so, uh, scholars, uh, scientists, uh, who noted the complexity and uh, versatility of delinquency problems related to the economic, social, criminal, criminological policy of the state and the development of society. 
The main points of view can be con concentrated the statement of legal terrorists. Mm. Uh, for example, Kid Drop suggested that the problems of crime was uh, purely legal. Uh, another scientist, uh, Bacina, was one of the first scholars in the modern uh, philosophy of law who started researching the problems of understanding crime, being an exceptional extreme threshold situation, a crime has the ability to attest a person, make him her appear and reveal him herself completely, to reveal those qualities that under other circumstances would remain hidden, not revealed. Uh, another scientist, Smellerso, believed that neither the empirical personality of the offender nor the social and natural causes of crime are the subject of the philosophy of crime, but the root causes or causes of the causes. Uh, the analysis of the points of view leads uh, to the conclusion that delinquency can be determined uh, on the basis of its object. The first structural, structural position must be considered in terms uh, of the humanities. These are the social foundational of society. Uh, at the first level, criminal delinquency and its uh, manifestation are studied from the uh, perspective of one of the uh, qualities of a person as a subject of social development of society. Therefore, the problems of crime or for philosophy is, first of all, the problem of attitude to a person that is a social problem. Philosophy does not deny any, disapprove the elements of crime and specific type of crime, but studies this phenomenon as an objective fact. The second approach to the problem of criminal delinquency should be built on the basis of comprehensive interco uh, interconnection of scientist level and the degree of abstractness. Uh, constantly moving from abstract phenomenon to concrete fact on the basis of the theoretical generalization is possible to determine the scientific uh, hierarchy, the subject of which is the crime. Uh, in recent years, uh, philosophy of law has received a new impetus uh, for development. One, uh, the, um, on the one hand, this science is trying to raise certain legal problems to the level of philosophy, Psychological understanding, on the other, it is obvious that there is an attempt for legal philosophizing in order to obtain legal knowledge of high degree of abstractness. However, if the subject of philosophy is an objective reality, which includes a person, then the philosophy of law is enjudged in the study of the meaning of law. It's a sense, a concept, foundation, and place in the world of values and significance, as well as the role of law in the life of an individual society and the state. If uh, for philosophy, criminal delinquency is one of the form of social ex existence, for psychology, it is first of all social harmful behavior. Uh, for sociology, criminal delinquency acts as a consequences of the inhibiting of social actors to find the civilized form of resolving life uh, contradictions. Psychologists study how the behavior of individual social actors divides uh, for the behavior of most people in society. De uh, deviance is determined by the conformity of uh, inconsistency of actions with social expectations. The most significant deviated uh, from social expectation norm in, is crime and criminal misconduct. Uh, it's mean delict. In each uh, case, social expectations are relatively uh, stable, although uh, they change over time under the influence of a number of political, economical, social, and other factors. A statement of factual material, uh, psychologists uh, subdivide criminal delict into those that exist regardless of the historical time of the level of development of society and those that are socially dangerous, wrongful acts. Uh, for example, maybe uh, someone remember that in USSR, private enterprise was considered a crime. Uh, it is uh, scientifically established that the first group includes social delicts. Uh, it consists of actions that were recognized as delicts only in certain historical period or in a certain social area. The second group of criminal delicts can be defined as social dangerous acts. Criminal law puts crime again 
uh, against the persons in the first place as they are associated with committing murder, causing bodily harm and taking some other types of socially dangerous unlawful acts. Uh, social uh, psychology can eliminate and prevent the factors uh, affecting the formation of uh, delinquent attitudes, including criminal ones. It helps to successfully disclose, investigate and prosecute criminal cases. A judge makes a procedural decision on the basis of which a person brought uh, to criminal liability can be convicted only if they uh, confirm change and all circumstances are provided in court. In the evidence uh, of the prosecution has not been confirmed during the judicial review of the criminal case, then the judge, the collegial court, must announce the acquittal. For example, a, a fundamental attribution error is most often manifested in determining is the guilt of, uh, of a person in committing a crime, as well as the cause of investigative search actions against a suspect. Uh, the essence of the fun uh, fundamental attribution error is that the criminal offense committed by criminal justice authorities is whole attribute to the completely uh, negative personality traits of the suspect. In turn, the suspect sometimes refer to unf uh, unfavorable ex uh, external factors that prompt him to commit a criminal offense. Improving his own role in its uh, commission and the creation of criminal intent. The investigator, prosecutor, judge must establish the reasons and conditions for committing the crime and take further measures to prevent it. Uh, based on the general provisions for uh, the development of criminal delinquency, the scholars uh, are taking measures related to the development of uh, scientific methods of uh, influencing it. The main goal is determined through a social framework. The interconnection of social and legal sciences can lead to the uh, fulfillment of the objectives of the fight against crime. The methods developed and proposal by social psychology are aimed at improving public awareness, uh, preventing criminal delict, improving methods for identifying, disclosing, investigating, prosecuting, and increasing the effectiveness of the execution of criminal sentences. And for conclusions, uh, uh, however, for all its merits, uh, the theory of state and law does not pay enough attention to the problem of criminal delinquency. The theoretical construction of this science affects only its individual elements, such as the description of forbidden norms, sanction, and legal liability. The study of individual criminal offenses cannot satisfy the needs of applied legal sciences, the purpose of which is to develop means and methods in order to reduce the number of certain types of criminal delicts. Criminal delinquency can be defined as a single object of science of the criminal legal cycle, the subject of each of uh, which is separate side of the phenomenon, the most promising are interdisciplinary studies with the aim of uh, formulating integrative uh, theories that allow to only understand and explain criminal delinquency as an ad uh, attribute of a social phenomenon, but also to identify ways to most effective influence in uh, order to limit and reduce it to social established uh, boundaries. Uh, Thank you for, for your attention. Thank Maybe. you for such interesting report. Do anybody has a question? We haven't yet. Then I would like to invite uh, the next uh, report is uh, by Tatiana Slinko and Eugene Tkachenko, ensuring person uh, languages right in the edu uh, educational sphere in Ukraine. Thank you, Tatiana Slinko and Yevgeny Tkachenko. Uh, Yaroslav Mudry, National Law University. Our report, uh, topic of our report, uh, our article is Human Persons Language Rights in the Educational Sphere in Ukraine. Introduction at present stage in the educational Swear of Ukraine, there is a problem with finding of legislative balance between the goal of the state language policy to ensure the use and development of Ukrainian language as the state on the other hand to guarantee the right to learn and study the mother tongue by minorities. 
Uh, theoretical condition one of the, the unequivalence of the legal regulation of language relation in the field of education, culture, science, book publishing and information is that one of the hand. The state must ensure national interest, the predominance of state language in these areas. On the other hand, to ensure the citizens of national groups and the right to education in their national language to the development of their personality through the use of their native language and to receive information regardless of its language. State and legal regulation of language relations in the private sphere is not carried out at all of course through the legislative instrument of general human language freedoms. Persons language rights in the educational sphere. Constitution of Ukraine established guarantees for the language right of national minorities and indigenous people of Ukraine. Statement of factual material. An important component of the state language and international policy is to ensure the rights of ethnic minorities to study and study their native language in the state education institutes. That is why in part 5 of Article 53 of the Basic Law stipulates the citizen belonging to national minorities and guaranteed by law the right to study in their mother tongue or, or to learn their mother tongue in the state and municipal education institutes. Or through national culture societies, they use the legal construction of con conjunction or laws a fairly broad interpretation of these possibilities inherent in this rule. That in some cases, education and education institutes in the language is a na national minority may be provided in the others. The language of national minority may be studied in a separate discipline. Moreover, both training and study can be carried out in any state and municipal institutes because neither the Constitution of Ukraine nor the current legislation contains a restrictive list of such institutes. The phrase guaranteed right, means, guaranteed right means that the state must take measures to ensure the right that is to create appropriate educational institutes in which education is provided in the language or national minority or to ensure the study of the national language in separate discipline. Uh, the mechanism of exercising the language right is national minority established in Article 7 of the law of Ukraine on education according to so which persons belonging to national minorities of Ukraine are guaranteed the right to study in communal education institutes for preschool or primary education, along with the state language, also the language of the respective national minorities. The right is exercised by creating in accordance with the legislation separate classes. With education, the language of the respective national minority, along with the state language, and does not apply to classes group with education in the Ukraine language. Well, we believe that such requirements of the law provide discriminatory advantages, privileges on the basis of language and ethnic origin in the only two persons belonging to indigenous people. After all, part two of Art 10 and Art Article 11 of the Constitution of Ukraine states precisely the guarantees of use the languages of all na national minorities indigenous people of Ukraine and in no way emphasizes the special rights of any ethnic group. Also, they expect there is a question of violation of Article 24 of the Constitution of discrimination violation of the principle of equality, because privileges are granted only representatives on indigenous peoples of Ukraine compared to representative, uh, representative of national minorities. According to on the 20. Uh, Zero one all Ukrainian census, more than 130 nationalities live in Ukraine. It should also be emphasized that representatives of the Bulgarian, Hungarian, Greek, Polish, Romanian, Russian, and other national minority live compactly in Ukraine. And therefore, the language rights in the field of education and other spheres of public life must also be protected. Therefore, as already method is there is currently and uh, Agent uh, need to develop and adopt a law on the use of indigenous language and language of national minorities in Ukraine, which eliminates this legal vacuum and some violation of national legislation in the field of education. Uh, the Venice Commission of, of in uh, its opinion of December 11, 2017, a similar paragraph contained in the law on education does not provide a solution for languages that are not official languages of the European Union, in particular for Russian, is the most widely used uh, language in Ukraine together with Ukrainian. 
Less favorable treatment of these languages are difficult to justify and terrorize this equation of its discrimination. In view of this, consider as the correct solution would be amend Article 7 to replace this provision with a more balanced on the clear one. This one again confirms our thesis that based on the provision of Part 5 of Article 53 of the Constitution and International Obligation of Ukraine. The law on the use of languages of national minorities and indigenous people should define a clear and uniform for ethnic groups of Ukraine the procedure for studied, uh, studying in minority languages. And one of the conclusions of our, of our article presented to Ukraine there is an urgent need to develop and adopt a separate law that would establish the procedure for the use of national minority languages in public sphere of public life and guarantee their languages. Thank you, dear colleagues, for our attention. Thank you. It is humanitarian interventions in the light of principles of uh, of uh, the light uh, of light of principles of peaceful coexistence of states by Mr. Sergei Kuznichenko, Doctor of Law, Professor Honored Worker of Science and um, Technology of Ukraine, Vice Director of National Academy of International Affairs, and me, Vladimir Pyadishev, Doctor of Law, Assistant Professor. Professor of Odessa State University of Internal Affairs. From uh, since the ancient times to the best minds of mankind, do you really see me? Do you hear me? Do you see me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, since the ancient times to the best minds of mankind have wondered how to ensure justice and peace on earth. Finally, in 1975, the Helsinki Accords were adopted. Some of the principles of uh, Peaceful coexistence of states indicated there predetermined the need uh, for external intervention in the event of massive violations of human rights in a country. But some other principles seem to prohibit such actions. These interventions were called humanitarian interventions, and uh, they were carried out many times. In this regard, a number of questions arise. First, can humanitarian intervention be legitimate in principle? Thus, in 19, 19, I'm sorry, 1625, in his treatise on the law of war and peace, the father of international law, Hugo Grotius, noted that a ruler, if a ruler who persecuted his subjects threatened their very existence, the community had the right to end this persecution by the force of arms. Thus, if the situation with human rights reaches the level of humanitarian catastrophe, then intervention is necessary. In accordance with the idea of people's sovereignty, in this case, there is no issue of violating the sovereignty of state since the sovereignty of the people had already been violated by the own state from inside, and a duly organized intervention will just restore the trampled sovereignty. Second, um, massive violations of which human rights should be considered the basis for humanitarian intervention. In our opinion, humanitarian intervention can be justified in case of violations of only those fundamental human rights that once taken away from a person cannot be returned. Three, what number of violations of fundamental human rights per 1,000 population should be considered the basis for humanitarian intervention? Today, there are many ratings of states for different indicators. To decide whether to justify any kind of humanitarian intervention, it is necessary to create and maintain a map of objective ratings of countries in terms of the level of violations of fundamental human rights. Also, also a standard criterion on uh, how many of those violations per 1,000 population should be the basis of uh, intervention. And question number four, how can we how can genuine humanitarian intervention be distinguished from other interventions? Based on the analysis of, uh, uh, of uh, opinions of many scientists and practitioners, we have developed a system of criteria for separating true humanitarian interventions from pseudo-humanitarian interventions and from pseudo-interventions. Does it make sense to resort to humanitarian interventions today when the institution when uh, the institution of UN peacekeeping operations has already been established. Compared to international peacekeeping operations, humanitarian interventions are being deployed many times faster. And this is an imperative to put an immediate end to the humanitarian catastrophe. 
But any humanitarian intervention should be gradually replaced by an international peacekeeping operation. Thus, we try to clarify five important issues concerning the humanitarian interventions in the light of the principles of peaceful coexistence. Thanks for your attention. Thank you for your report. Any questions? Do you have questions? Uh, I'm asking if, any, if somebody has. We have a question. Please. I'm listening. Asking the question. Uh, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Woldimer, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, what are the conditions uh, for successful uh, humanitarian intervention uh, in the east part of Ukraine? Uh, first of all, I would not say that uh, we have humanitarian intervention. We don't have uh, actually being uh, objective. Uh, if I am as a Ukrainian, I believe that we have a kind of intervention, but I'm not sure that it is humanitarian because uh, we developed a strong system to distinguish between humanitarian interventions, real ones and not real ones, not humanitarian interventions. Uh, the difference, first difference is that is the real purpose humanitarian? It is one point. The second, what is the result? Is the result positive? And the third, uh, definitely it should be military action. And the fourth, it should not be uh, supported by United Nations yet. What I mean? If uh, the, uh, such an operation, such an intervention is supported by United Nations, now from this moment it becomes so-called United Nations force operation, because the United Nations are trying not to be involved in, uh, in terms of interventions. So uh, we are, uh, while dealing with interventions, we had a lot of interventions previously. It was Kosovo, it, it was uh, Bosnia, it, there were many of them. Uh, and uh, we should be sure to confirm inter intervention or we should accuse those ones of the, uh, the invader because he speculates that it is humanitarian intervention, but it is just an inter intervention. Do you see the difference? And it is important for us in the world for now and for future to have this legal basis, legal instrument to protect people or from either from inside, either from outside. But we should know perfectly well what is going on in, in any kind of future need or not need to do intervention. Do you feel my answer? Do you, do you feel me with my answer? Thank, Thank you very much. Super. I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. Uh, and we go on. At this stage, I would like to introduce uh, Sergei Kuznichenko and Ina Tsiganovska, differentiation and meaning of ethics and other emotional stage of a person. Good day. Good day. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to take part in the international conference. Uh, Sergei Kuznichenko, National Academics and International Affairs, Ina Slagaevska, Vernadsky Tavrida National University. Our uh, report is about differentiation and meaning of effects and other emotional states of a person. The doctrine of criminal law determines the difficulty in interpreting the term of intense emotional disturbance due to the lack of its application in psychology. Intensity of this concept in other fields of science causes in ambiguity in criminal law. This is criminal law meaning from the understanding and interpretation of which depth consequences for the perpetrator. The term of intense emotional disturbance is unknown to the psychological science which leads uh, to ambiguous statements of its criminal law nature. 
A state of intense emotional disturbance is often identified with such an emotional state as a physiological effect. Five types of effects have criminal and legal significance, and the consideration of which leads to the different criminal and legal consequences. The emotional arousal and emotional tension are recognized as two varieties, effective states of cumulative type characterized by long-term accumulation of emotions due to personal and situation characteristics. Such states don't belong to the physiological effect in their intensity, but the case law reference them to a state that is identical to the effect in its criminal law sense. However, the identification such state as uh, emotional arousal and emotional tension with effect is incorrect because they have no sense of suddenness. Such emotional state of a person is physiological, simple, abnormal, effect, cumulative effects, emotional stress, frustration, emotional arousal, and emotional tension. Expert practice defines such, which can be a physiological basis for the meaning of a strong emotional excitement because they can significantly limit person's ability to realize it, actions and manage them. The concept of intense emotional disturbance should be replaced uh, by the phrase of emotional state caused by traumatic influence. This in its meaning is the physiocriminal and forensic content, determining the individual physiological characteristics of a person. His or her emotional state from the effects of traumatic situation caused by legal violence, systematic bullying of severe insult by the victim, provide an opportunity to establish a relationship between traumatic situation and perpetration actions. A complaint by a deduction in capacity of individual to control him or herself, thereby significantly nerves the ability to aware and control of his or her actions. Very grateful for your attention. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? Thank you for your report. Uh, we consider uh, it's a great honor to welcome uh, the next report with uh, Mikola Karczewski and Helena Karczewski. Uh, the report is called Agent Based Modeling as a Method of Crime Research. Uh, my greetings from uh, Serdonetsk, from Lugansk State University of Internal Affairs, and uh, let me introduce the main results of our research. Uh, the low quality of sociological research is not a new problem, but today, thanks to informatization, humanity receives vast amounts of data. The latest methods of uh, working with the data allows qualitatively updating the methodology of social sciences and their results. The use of computational social science to solve problems facing criminology is also quite promising. Consider the possibilities and prospects of using agent-based modeling in field of crime prevention. The key provisions that characterize the method are as follows. An agent in an autonomous computational individual or object with particular properties and actions. Agent-based modeling is a form of computational modeling whereby a phenomenon is modeled in terms of agents and their interactions. Artificial society, a simulation model created by computer technology of a society, a group of people, which is based on agents and is usually limited by their interaction in a particular situation. Using NetLogger software, we created a crime prevention model. The source code of the model and demonstration materials are presented in free access. The artificial society that is created during the operation of our model consists of four types of agents. 
Non-criminals, criminals, police and sense. Criminals may or may not be uh, convicted. All agents move randomly. The parameter that characterizes not criminal is legal culture. The parameter changes depending on change, chance encounters with criminals. If a non-criminal meets the, an unconvicted criminal, the legal the level of his legal culture is decreased. If non-criminal meets convicted criminal, the level of his legal culture increases. Non-criminal becomes unconvicted criminal, then his legal, legal culture is below zero. An unconvicted criminal obtains convicted stat status if he is in the field of influence of policemen. After serving a sentence with probability of correction, convicted criminal becomes either non-criminal or unconvicted criminal. The sense never commit crimes, they only increase legal culture of non-criminals. Like any other uh, model, the affair is a simplification. The presented work should be considered a pilot study of agent-based modeling in crime prevention. But even at this level of complexity, it confirms a vital hypothesis. First one, increasing punishment is less effective than non-repressive measures. And second, inevitability of punishment has a more significant impact than the severity of punishment. So, um, agent-based modeling we can see is a promising update of criminology methodology. Researchers have the opportunity to formulate and test hypotheses in the form of interdependencies and configuration of parameters of artificial society. It makes sense to develop new models to test more complex hypotheses. The main expected results of using the described method is to increase effectiveness of combating crime. Based on computational model and results, decisions on state or regional crime prevention programs will hopefully be more rational. Thank you very much for attention and question, please, folks. Thank you for your response. Has anyone here a question? Question? Yes. Yeah, Question. May I ask you? Of course. Okay. If I properly understand, have you compared your results or your mythology with those effective countries which have low level of crimes? Uh, does uh, your system correspond to their to the behavior of their governments, their states, and to your model? Is my question clear? Of course, clear. Thank you, uh, Vladimir. Uh, uh, I, as I said, uh, our uh, research was uh, a kind of um, pilot study. Pilot study. We just test new method of uh, thinking about crime prevention. We. Uh, the method is definitely very interesting. But it will be rather, rather nice to compare with Singapore, Taiwan, uh, and so on and so forth, and other yes. countries with small rate of criminal activity. Maybe, uh, maybe in the future, of course, we do uh, so, but the uh, main uh, result of our research was to show to our community what uh, we can think about society in other terms. In, term of, in terms of, of agents, in terms of artificial societies, so on. It definitely is a good beginning. It should be proceeded. Thanks. Thank you for your answer. And we go next. I would like to present uh, the Anatoly Mokchan and Maxim Mokchan application of international and communicational technologies in training of criminal analysis for the units of the National Police of Ukraine. Please. Dear colleagues, my name is Anthony Movchan, Doctor of Law, Professor at the State University of Internal Affairs.
the European Union advisories mission in Ukraine supports the Ministry of Internal Affairs and the National Police of Ukraine in order to implement the intelligence Black policing, ILP, appropriate methods of applying criminal analysis for a long time have been used in the activities of law enforcement agencies of the European Union, the United States, Canada, as well as Interpol and Europol. At present, the professional level of national police analytical staff is not yet fully in line with our requirements. In addition, the training of criminal analysts is not always based on the use of modern information and communication technology. In the course of the survey, we interviewed 160 practitioners of the analytical, operational, and investigation units of the National Police. As we see, respondents in the priority areas of improving the training of specialists in criminal analysis include conducting training for criminal analysts, the use of information technology in the training of specialists in criminal analysis, improvement of the organization of independent training of specialists with the ability to use internet resources. And the use of information technology in the training of criminal analysts involves the use of, uh, of cloud-oriented infrastructure and software and technological support. An important factor in the training of specialists in criminal analysis is information technolo technology education. The use of teaching software in the context <clears throat> of information and communication technologies in the process of training future specialists in criminal analysis is carried out in the following areas. Teacher consultant, hypermedia training system, quasi-teacher, virtual reality, virtual education environment. According to the results of the survey of criminal analysts of the National Police of Ukraine, the vast majority of the respondents attributed to the main ways of the improvement of the training of future specialists in the criminal analysis with the use of information and communication technologies in the training of future specialists. In particular, electronic tools, the introduction of a learning process, special computer programs and computer tests. The electronic training courses under the conditions of training management systems are capable to provide the presentation of study material both in textual and audiovisual formats and to provide an opportunity to guide learning. Priorities in the organization of training of specialists in criminal analysis in the Center of Primary Training Police Academy and High Education Institution of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine should be why use in the educational process of computer-based tools and information and communication technologies, the practical implementation of distance learning technologies. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Um, we have a special guest today whom, I want, uh, whom I'm excited to introduce to you. It's Resim Babenli and Aksana Kvasha, Grounds of uh, Punishment System Development, Sentences, Guidelines, Implementation in con uh, Continental Law Systems. Uh, I'm sorry. 
Uh, thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much. It is our great pleasure to participate in such an international conference, and we are very pleased to share the results of our scientific research, and it is the research about the issues of uh, sentencing. Um, I want to try to share my screen. I hope that you see my presentation. Can you confirm it? Yes, of course, it's okay. Uh, great. So our topic is uh, the grounds of my punishment system development, sentencing guidelines, implementation in continent continental law system. Um, on the basis of the analysis of the whole world concepts of how to achieve the consistency of sentencing, we found out that there are several states, for example, uh, United States of America, uh, England, Australia, these are the countries uh, who implement, which implemented the sentencing guideline system. Uh, despite them, we see that um, none of the uh, co uh, continental uh, law system states implemented the same and our question is whether is it is possible to implement the same system in continental law system or uh, this sentencing guideline system may be appropriate only to the anglo-saxon system uh, to be brief i want to say that our main conclusion is uh, the following despite the fact that the implementation of sentencing guidelines was made mostly in countries of uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, law system, it doesn't preclude the possibility and even more feasibility of its adoption in the countries of continental uh, law system. Uh, we are sure that uh, the only way of a qualitative improvement of the state of sentencing is implementation, considering the peculiarities of certain uh, law system, uh, of other countries experience where the sentencing guidelines are adopted. Uh, also, we can make a conclusion that um, the uh, doctrine of the sentencing, a doctrine of the punishment is more uh, highly developed in the states uh, which implemented the sentencing guideline system. Uh, unlike other states, uh, for example, the European state, you may uh, find um, less uh, materials about uh, the question how to solve the problem uh, that uh, the similar uh, crimes should be punished by the similar uh, punishments. And um, it, it is the problem, and uh, we, uh, on the basis of our analysis, uh, we think that the priority in this respect is the question of aim which urges the adoption of sentencing guidelines, namely uh, providing the consistency in, uh, in sentencing. Uh, sentencing the proper type and scale of punishment, uh, the um, re realization of the main aims of punishment, etc. It is obvious that such an aim is typical for any country which faces the problem of sentencing independent independently of its type of uh, law system so uh, we think that there are no problems uh, which could uh, face the sentencing guidelines implementation in uh, the states which are the representative of continental law system and i think that uh, this conclusion may be the basis of the next uh, steps for example in uh, dealing uh, with an issue of implementation of such system into Ukrainian uh, legal system. And we want to share this conclusion with you and we want to, um, to listen or to hear the feedback or some questions which may uh, happen uh, in, um, in, uh, in dealing with such an idea. Thank you very much for your attention. I want to be uh, brief and uh, I think that you will be able to read uh, the whole our uh, argumentation on these issues in our article. So uh, once more, I want to thank you um, for the uh, chance to participate in such a conference. And I think that uh, our research would be useful uh, of the development of the criminal law. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rusi. Has anyone a question about sentences? No, thank you. Okay, then we go. <clears throat> may I present the next report uh, by uh, 
Jury Voloshin and Natalia Mushak, Impact of COVID-19 on the realization of freedom of movement, of movement in the European Union and its member states. Uh, thank you very much. Dear participants of the conference, uh, firstly, I would like to thank you to each of you for the great possibility to be the member of such high qualified community and to represent our uh, research. Uh, firstly, I would like to stop on the impact of COVID and on the realization of the freedom of movement in the European Union and its member states. The report uh, is dedicated on the impact of COVID-19 on the realization of freedom of movement in the European Union and its member states. This report is uh, presented by Yuri Voloshin, it's a uh, Dean of the Department of International and Comparative Law, uh, National Aviation University, and me, Natalia Mushak, Professor, Department of International and Comparative Law, uh, Faculty of International Relations. So. Uh, the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus crisis, which began in early March 2020 in Europe, caused a situation when the majority of European countries were forced to restrict the freedom of movement of the persons. I would like to draw attention that freedom of movement is just one of four fundamental freedoms of the internal market of the EU and its member states. It's also the freedom that includes the right of persons to live to work and to reside in each of the EU member states. Uh, in regard of the right of person to enter the state led to a sharp decrease in the rate of migration to the most industrialized countries of the EU. According to Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the percentage of new visas and resident permits in the first half of 2020 decreased by 46% compared to the first half of 2019. In the second part and the second quarter of 2020, the reduction fell to 72%. Uh, another key point that I would like to uh, pay your attention is about the recent steps of the Council of the European Union on restrictions. It's the Council of the EU, it's the legislative body, it's one of the legislative bodies that uh, has and is empowered to introduce and to adopt uh, the obligatory uh, compulsory legal acts in the sphere, especially in the freedom of movement. The most important is the amendment uh, of council recommendations on the temporary restrictions of non-essential travels to the EU and the possible lifting of such restrictions, uh, which was adopted uh, this year uh, on the 1st of February. Uh, in accordance with this uh, recommendation, uh, all the member states should prevent all non-essential travels to red and dark red areas. Also, the European countries, a lot of European countries, I think the majority of them, should also require COVID-19 tests from those citizens who arrive into the territory from an area that is classified as dark red. Furthermore, the citizens have to be in self-isolation. Uh, I would like to tell you that not just the EU, but also its member states also provide uh, and introduce its, their national uh, measures to restrict the freedom of movement. Also, they are similar and they are common because Yes, of course, the freedom of movement is incorporated in a lot of constitutions, in a lot of uh, European constitutions. But nevertheless, uh, in such steps, uh, the countries, they demonstrate, they express their willingness to limit and uh, to restrict the freedom of this one. Uh, just not EU, but its member states provide the restrictions. For example, uh, the restrictions of France uh, were uh, provided just uh, in the beginning of this year. And uh, the French government prohibits entry from outside the European Union's countries as well as leaving their country. The ban comes into force uh, at the end of uh, 31st of uh, January 2021. This prohibition, I would like to pay uh, your attention that uh, not just can uh, coincide the only the workers because 
all the persons and all the employees who uh, who are working in France could return on their territory. At the same time, it will be possible to enter France from EU territory, but only with a negative test for COVID-19. For instance, France will increase and intensify the anti-epidemic measures. The same as in France uh, has made Germany. Germany also provides a um, huge of restrictions that uh, could be applied for Germans who uh, just not would like and have not uh, the close relations with their families, but who would like to travel to study uh, and to work without or in, it can be uh, concerned with illegal migration. So from the 1st of um, February to this year, the entry ban will also apply to two African countries, Lesotho and Esbeti. In general, the two restrictions on uh, entry to Germany are already in force in about 40 countries, especially those where new, more contagious strains of coronavirus are common. Uh, the same I would like to tell about the Czech Republic. Uh, for example, the borders are closed altogether for all the foreigners. With just one exception and just one uh, the example is made for those people who are studying, working and have a resident permit in the country. Also, it is possible to enter the Czech Republic to with the close relatives, receive medical uh, care, participate in different kind, uh, kinds of events, just at funerals or weddings. Uh, other words, taking into consideration the spread of COVID-19 in the, with the world, both the European Union uh, on its one hand and its member states on the other hand, take a number of measures at the institutional and national levels in particular. I would like also to tell you that uh, despite of the limit of the time, I will not concentrate on the legal instruments adopted uh, under the United Nations, but all these instruments, I mean the directives, regulations, conclusions adopted by the European Union, they have and they correspond to the UN instruments. So, uh, also, I would just tell you in sum up and to sum up my, uh, our research that the freedom of movement is one of the key provisions on which the entire system of law of the European Union is based. Uh, such freedom is based on the provisions of the agreements on the citizens of the Union and the freedom uh, movement of workers. Just uh, not the primary, but also secondary legislation, directives, regulations, uh, also conclusions, and especially uh, I pay attention to the statutory work and judicial work of the EU court. Uh, the provision, and the last one, the provisions on the free movement of persons apply to all categories of citizens of the EU uh, states engaged in economic activities and with the introduction of the EU citizens and all citizens of the uh, Union. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have the question, I am ready to answer. Thank you. Thank you. So we go on, and at this stage, I would like to introduce the next report by Daria Daria Prokofieva Yanchilenko, methods of assessing threat to uh, to to criminological security. My name is Daria Prokofieva Yanchilenko. I'm a doctor in law and the head of Inter-Service Research Center into combating organized crime problem under the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine. Uh, I'm glad to welcome everyone and to present my research methods for assessing threats to criminological security. <clears throat> Modern thought society is a society of risk and crime its institutional practice. The permanent existence of criminal threats, tools, fears, and objects of national security of Ukraine, the cost and conditions of a crime and related challenges, principle the existence uh, of an integrative component of national security, criminological security. 
maintaining a socially acceptable level of criminal Logical security can be through risk management. At the head of the concept of social acceptable level of criminological security is the differentiation of risk level at different stage of its manifestations, as well as the um, understanding that risk is not static and unchanging, but a controlled parameter. Feedback between risks and threats uh, can ensure that implementation of the most effective mechanism for countering threats to criminal security. Uh, the key to successful application of risk management is effective um, assessment to threats to criminological security. Uh, the assessment is carried out in three stages by identifying threats to criminological security, analytical proceeding of information about threats, determining level of threats. The following parameters are subject to evaluation, prob probability of threat realization, threat uh, relevance, threat dynamics, dangers of consequences, uh, security environment in the context of threat realization. This assessment not only allows to determine the level <coughs> of threat, but also to identify a controlled parameter for risk management. And today, Sorry. Oh. Today, alternatives to the law enforcement system, the system are a competition of powers, costly and ineffective fight against, against crimes, which for the law enforcement system are external and uncontrollable factors, or risk which guarantees the stability and the efficiency of the law enforcement system in the context of social change. Uh, more information you can see in my article. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you for your Do you hear me? Something. Thank you. Uh, let's let's uh, go uh, next up to um, Larissa Arkusha and Alexander Tobas. Provo provocation and control over the commission of a crime: significance and correlation. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Please tell me, could you see my presentation on your screen? Yes, everything is good. Okay, thank you very much. So it's my pleasure to present our uh, joint research of my colleague Larissa Kusha, head of Department of Criminal Procedure, Detective of Operational Activities of the National University of Dessalo Academy, Doctor of Law Professor, and myself. My name is Alexander Torbas. I'm associate professor of the same department of the National University uh, of Dessalo Academy. Our topic for the research was the provocation and control over the commission of a crime, significance and correlation. Because as a practice shows, there are uh, many, many problems. Uh, sometimes there are many problems for the separation of these two uh, technically different in the uh, their significance, but very similar of the methods of their conducting procedural activities. Problems of possible provocation in law enforcement agencies' activities arise during the application of such covered investigative such action as a control over the commission of a crime according to the Article 271 of the Criminal Procedural Code of Ukraine, which could be conducted as a controlled delivery, controlled and operational procurement, special investigative experiment and simulation of the crime. The criminal procedural legislation of Ukraine does not contain a clear distinction between control over the commission of crime and provocation. In part 3 of the Article 271 of the Criminal Procedural Code of Ukraine, the legislator stated that during the preparation and conduction of such action, it's prohibited to provoke inside a person to commit this crime in order to further expose it to help person or to commit a crime he would not have committed if the investigator did not interfere, or for the same purpose to influence his or her behavior by violence, threats, blackmails, etc. 
Evidence obtained in this way cannot be used in criminal proceedings. Thus, legislator obliged to refrain from provocation before committing a crime while formulating only general understanding of provocation and control. According to the practice of the European Court of Human Rights and Ukrainian National Court, the following lists four lists of criteria uh, could be conducted for the distinguishing over the control uh, the commission of a crime from provocation. First, the crime in any case would have been committed regardless of the intervening of law enforcement agencies or undercover officers or agents. The key factor in this case will be the establishing of probability of committing a criminal offense without uh, the knowledge of law enforcement agencies. The nature of pressure or uh, other methods of inciting a person to commit a crime is only one of the factors that should have been taken into account while, uh, when deciding whether there is a provocation. But the problem does not end there. To address this issue, a broader context must be taken into um, account as, uh, than behavior of uh, participants during this event, which defense consider as a provocation and prosecution consider as an acceptable method of investigation. Second criteria, law enforcement agencies became aware of the likelihood of committing a crime after the intent of committing a crime arose in person's mind. During criminal proceedings, it must be established whether there was an objective suspicion that a person was engaged in criminal activity or prone to commit a crime. Any prior information about the existing criminal in intent should make it possible to verify this fact, uh, and authorities should be able to prove it any time that they had a sufficient grounds to carry out a covert operation. If it's proved that the person's intent to commit a crime arose on their own and they simply reacted to it in time, then there is no provocation. And yet, in order to take any active actions, law enforcement officers need to have objective information about the preparation for a crime. Third criteria, passive behavior of law enforcement officers and undercover agents. A European Court of Human Rights uh, Note that uh, passive behavior of authorities cannot be considered uh, when the initiative in contact with the suspect comes from the undercover uh, officers or agents or when the officer is renewed after the initial refuse. And the fourth criteria is strict documentary recording of actions of law enforcement agencies. As it was already mentioned, a person's intent to commit a crime offense should have uh, arisen before law enforcement officers learned all alleged criminal conduct and began preparing uh, to monitor the commission of a crime. For this purpose, clear procedural recording should take place. Prosecutor will have to provide proof that the intent to uh, commit the crime arose earlier without uh, an, uh, the active intervention of law enforcement agencies. For example, in the, in the materials of criminal proceedings, there should be a statement of a person from whom the bribe is demanded, on the basis of which the control over the commission of crime will be carried out. All materials of crimes proceedings should contain information obtained promptly about the impending crimes and the information will be used as a basis for the pretrial investigation. It should be noted that such information will be examined in court, so such evidence must be clearly indicate the existence of grounds for monitoring the crime and documentation must be impeccable because any procedural violation can lead to the recognition of almost all evidence in the relevant criminal proceedings inadmissible according with the theory of poison through uh, three rules. Uh, that's all information that I can give you within the strict time limits. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions, I can answer them. Thank you for your report. And uh, we go the next report, uh, which I with pleasure introduce to Ludmila, Ludmila Gurtieva and Andrei Stepanenko, ruling of enforcement of compulsory measure of educational character cases, grounds of adaptation and standards of proof. Uh, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, does anyone see my presentation? Yes, everything is yeah. OK. Thank yeah. you. S thank you. Um, OK, um, I'm Andriy Stepanenko, an associate professor from the Department of Criminal Procedure, Detective and Operative Search Activities. And I want to share as a result of our uh, research, our paper, which was prepared with my colleague, Larissa Gurtieva, an associate professor from the same department. Um, 
So um, our paper deals with problems the Ukrainian courts face when considerable criminal cases against minors. And clearly the range of the issues is quite wide. However, in our paper, we uh, decided to focus on um, two questions. Um, uh, first one is that what are the cases in which the course of first instance shall render the decision to impose compulsory measures of educational character? And uh, the second one is what are the grounds and the applicable standard of proof to pass a ruling to impose these uh, compulsory measures of educational character? Um, and as to the first question, uh, in what case the decision to impose compulsory measures shall be taken? Um, Firstly, uh, since the criminal proceedings of Ukraine uh, consists of roughly two parts, uh, pre-trial and uh, pre-trial investigation and um, court proceedings, uh, it is um, the court of first initial shall consider decisions that were made uh, firstly at a pre-trial stage and uh, correspondingly the court proceedings. And secondly, the second uh, part of this so-called equation is the age of a minor in question, which also affects the possibility of enforcing uh, compulsory measures. So we concluded that regarding uh, the first uh, stage, uh, the pre-trial stage, if a person is under 14, is under 14, uh, the prosecutor shall either feel a motion to enforce compulsory measures of educational character or uh, shall force uh, an indictment. And uh, excuse me, if under 15, it should be uh, only a motion to impose compulsory measures. And if the age of a person is above 15, uh, 15, uh, 14, the prosecutor shall um, pass either a motion to impose compulsory measures or send an indictment to the court. And as regards the uh, court proceedings during court hearings, the court may enforce compulsory measures to, my, to minor when passing a decision in the form of either judgment or a ruling to close criminal proceedings and release a person from criminal responsibility by enforcing uh, compulsory measures. As to the second question, what are the grounds and applicable standard of proof? It also consists of two, uh, two parts which are uh, connected one to another. First of all, uh, um, what circumstances shall be established in order to enforce compulsory measures and to what extent or to put it another way, uh, what standard of proof shall be used? Uh, regarding the factual grounds, we argue that during court consideration, the set of circumstances provided for in Articles 91 and 485 of uh, uh, Criminal Procedural Code of Ukraine is not exhaustive, and there are some additional uh, facts and circumstances that shall be determined or examined during the court consideration and uh, pre-trial investigation, which you can find in our, uh, in our article. And given that the ruling to enforce uh, compulsory measures of educational character is a decision where the minor's involvement in the commission of the alleged act shall be shown, or to put it other way, a guilty of a person shall be shown, the court shall be bound by the beyond reasonable doubt standards. Uh, however, we believe that given the provisions of Article 17, namely the presumption of innocence, also Articles 485 and five, uh, 501 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, uh, it is demonstrated that the questions arising while deciding whether to enforce compulsory measures shall be addressed by the court with, uh, with, this, as, with the idea of uh, probabilistic nature of circumstances to be ascertained. Uh, furthermore, the law does not require the prosecution party to prove all circumstances specified in the law beyond a reasonable doubt, and thus the other standards of proof may be applied to certain groups of facial circumstances, which we uh, identified in our paper. And also we argue that such a pros, uh, approach is in compliance with international practice, including the case law of European Court of Human Rights. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. And um, that's basically all I can say uh, in, within this time limit. And thank you for your attention. Maybe someone has any questions. Yes, we are waiting for questions. We have no questions. Thank you for your thank report. You. Thank you for your report. And I would like to invite Mikola Veselov and Sergei Vitvitsky 
with the report Internet and Juvenile Prevention, a new format of prophylactic activities with children. We organize this in the attendance of the First of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me to take part in such an amazing event. I really I really appreciate the opportunity of being a part of today. I would like to speak about smart contracts and perspective of their legal regulation in uh, Ukraine. The uh, concept of smart contract appeared in 1994 when cryptographer Nick Saab came to the uh, conclusion that with uh, the help of the electronic decentralized uh, register, it was possible to conclude contract that uh, who uh, executed uh, automatically. The basic uh, idea of smart contract is that many uh, uh, kinds of uh, contractual clauses can be embedded in the uh, hardware of software. The institutional problems of the society, such as trust, high cost of uh, managing information, risk of information attacks, and the possibility uh, of damage or loss of data can be solved by the blockchain technology, the digital environment of cryptocurrency circulation, as its uh, digital nature mean, uh, means uh, the uh, possibility of using a smart uh, contract. In uh, 2015, as a result of uh, amendments to the civil court of Ukraine, the electronic form of the transaction was uh, equated to, to the written uh, written one. Today, it is proposed to use smart contract in wide uh, range of legal uh, relationships, such as insurance, corporate is the uh, acquisition of property or um, for automatic payment for the uh, delivery of goods or uh, services. In conclusion, we have to underline several steps that should be done for creating a special legal framework for smart contract. Firstly, article. 207 of the civil code of Ukraine should be amended by adding the digital form of transaction. Secondly, cryptocurrency should be given the status of an object of civil rights by including in, uh, it to the list of uh, objects of civil rights under Article 177 of, of the civil Code um, of Ukraine. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your report and presentation. And uh, we have we any question? No, we haven't. Thank you. And uh, maybe we will try to return to Lizmila Balakina Palamir. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, everything is okay. Okay, now please. Okay. Show your while, while it's opening my presentation, I want to thank you for the possibility to participate at this international conference. And uh, we want to say hello to uh, Dmitro Slinko. Uh, he's uh, present here, uh, and uh, we are especially grateful for his help in serving students at Karazin Kharkiv National University. Uh, so our topic of our report uh, selecting innovative approaches to teaching English to law students via questionnaire analysis. Okay. Can you see my yes, presentation? Fantastic. Please start. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. uh, due to globalization processes and the current need for communication between states, there is a requirement for knowledge of a foreign language. This is important for professionals in any field, including lawyers. This primarily applies to the English language, including for passing the Unified Entrance Examination, UEE, which is a condition for admission to the master's degree. For example, in 2019, almost 55% of bachelors failed to pass the past failed threshold when entering the legal master's program. And in 2020, 36%. And the question arises, how to teach law students English and what ways to learn the language will be most effective? The survey in 2018-2019 involved 500 undergraduate students of law faculties, 100 from each university. Students from the first and fourth year were selected. All answers were used. We turn to the analysis of the survey results. The first question was formulated as follows to find out in future specialists feel the need to know English. And only 10% believe that there is no need to speak English in a high level. And the remaining 90% have the opposite opinion. Therefore, we believe that there is an urgent need for our study. The next two questions are inter connected. The second question, most respondents from all universities answered in, in the affirmative. The general picture is as follows. Yes, 29% and no, 71%. This picture leads to the next question. The purpose of this question was to find out what specializations students are interested in, namely judicial work, Counselor, judge, prosecutor, mediator, contract, notary, lawyer, practice in government agencies, investigator, police office, customs office, security service of Ukraine employee, diplomat, ambassador, counsel, and cooperative uh, and corporate practice, international lawyer. The fourth question is about more favorable ways to learn English for each student. Look at the general picture in table, table one. Consequently, I'm sorry, consequently, with a great advantage, the choice of students showed a, an interest in live communication with specialists, visual study, and the study of materials from a special prepared textbook. This choice suggests that the Ukrainian universities should involve digital technologies in the learning process and the experience of online education during quarantine in connection with the COVID-19 epidemic leads to the development of this form of education and after leaving quarantine to use their experience and move to blended learning, which combined offline and online formats. The results of the answers to the next question, where is was necessary to indicate your level of English, showed the following. Note that to study English for lawyers in high education, you need a level of at least B1 intermediate. See the full picture in table two. No, I'm sorry, do, do you see my presentation? No. I don't right. I don't know what happened. Can you try again? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will try like this. Mm -hmm. These indicators show that uh, entrants who entered a higher education institution do not have a sufficient level of knowledge of the language to develop it in a professional direction. It is necessary to get basic knowledge at school to hone them in universities. Accordingly, it is necessary to make restrictions for entrance during the entrance to a higher education institution so that only those who have a level of knowledge not 
lower than B1 to pass the UEE not lower than B2. The last two questions. The last two questions, uh, the authors aimed to find out whether the respondents have documents proving their knowledge of a language, and if so, which ones? The survey showed that only 10% of students who took part in the survey have a document. This result suggests that the real picture of the level of knowledge of English may be worth. And our conclusions. First, Instead of teaching legal English in general, offer third year English with narrow speciali specialization. Second, use digital technology and the internet in the learning process. And third, to pass the entrance test in such a way that the entrant has the opportunity to enter a higher education institution with the level of English not lower than B1 and a master's degree not lower than B2. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for so interesting report and it's very interesting that 34 percent of uh, uh, survey told that they want to commu uh, communication with professional in English but they uh, didn't know uh, English <laughs> it's interesting but it's really nice thank you uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, could I ask uh, a question uh, I'm always uh, glad to cooperate with your university uh, Krok, and uh, I have a question I remember your quiz uh, for students and how we do uh, did it. Uh, can you explain um, why English uh, with narrow specialization will be more effective for third year students? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your question. We think that English with narrow specialization will be effective because its specialization requires knowledge of industry, legislation, special terminology, and the specifics of the work as a whole. As a result, the graduate will have a better chance to uh, a better chance of getting a job. So I think it will um, make better our uh, education at universities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? No, thank you. Then we are going uh, to introduce the net, next report. And the next report is by Roman Leashuk and Andri uh, Tsarin, Tsaruk, experience of uh, information and analytic activities in the field of border protection of the European Union. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, thank you. Everything is okay. Okay. Uh, congratulations, uh, all uh, participation. Uh, that's scientific scientific conference, and thank you for invitation. Um, I introduce the result uh, our scientific research uh, about uh, European uh, experience in. Uh, uh, protection, uh, the European Union, and uh, analytic information. Uh, today's global information environment is uh, extremely dynamic and diverse, and it is uh, charging and uh, transforming very quickly. Due to the development of information technology, it has uh, become possible to uh, transfer large uh, amounts of information for sh a short period of time over long distance. To uh, find almost any information and to use it as a result, uh, the risks and risk uh, have a purchase as this information can be also used with the uh, objective uh, to organize cross-border crimes. Uh, the rapid de development of technologies over the last uh, decades in uh, particular information technologies 
led to the fact uh, the main information system were created in the uh, state authorities uh, of Ukraine. The current state of border uh, security uh, in Ukraine uh, should uh, ensure the appropriate level of uh, regional border security of the European Union. It is uh, logical uh, that the state have uh, imposed requirements for capabilities to protect the European Union's external eastern border. Today, the uh, introduction of European methods uh, for protection of external border is a uh, uh, pre prequestive for full members of Ukraine in the European Union uh, in the uh, future. Uh, the uh, purpose of uh, our uh, uh, article and uh, uh, our job is uh, to study the experience of information and analysis activities uh, to the fallot uh, of border protection in uh, European Union. Uh, formation and development uh, for joint protection uh, of the European Union's external borders. In uh, 2004, the European Agency uh, for the Management of operational cooperation and external border of the member states of the European Union Frontex uh, was established in the European Union to improve the uh, integrated border management of the European Union uh, member uh, state. Uh, in uh, accordance with the uh, regulation, Frontex uh, development, uh, a common interacted risk analysis model uh, for European Union member state, it's a uh, CRAM uh, 2.0, according to which risk analysis in uh, defunded and uh, systematic study of uh, certs, uh, uh, voluntarable and uh, consequences and the result of such analysis in a document in the form of the risk assessment. The uh, Schengen Information System, uh, it's uh, uh, SIS, was uh, subsequently uh, 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 set up in according with the uh, Convergment in uh, 2006 regulation approved the uh, second generation uh, SIS. Uh, the regulation uh, further established the e European Body uh, Service Lens uh, System, uh, which became a common basis for the uh, exchange of information and cooperation between member state and Frontex in uh, order to improve their situation, awareness and uh, reaction capability at the external border uh, of the member state of the Union for the purpose of detecting, preventing and combating illegal immigration and cross-border crime and uh, contributing to uh, ensuring the protection and saving the lives of uh, migration. To provide strategic, uh, strategic risk analysis, Frontex, uh, Frontex co collect information from a wide range of sources, including uh, border guard authorities of member state and uh, no European countries, European uh, partners, uh, it's uh, Eurostart, Europol and another uh, international organization uh, and uh, open uh, operation activity of uh, Frontex 
open source, including social media. Uh, Frontex analyzes the information gathered to establish and uh, maintain a generation situation evidences of the uh, patterns and trend of illegal migration and cross-border criminal activities affecting the uh, European Union's external border and uh, so-called secondary movements with the uh, Schengen uh, area. Uh, the norms of the European legislation are already uh, particularly uh, implemented in the national legislation of Ukraine and normative legal uh, acts of state bodyguard service uh, of Ukraine. But the Ukraine le legislation uh, should correlate as much as possible uh, with uh, the uh, European uh, acts. Uh, information and analysis uh, activities of the State Bodyguard Service and uh, other IBM subjects uh, require the latest methods and uh, technological for working with information. We consider it appropriate to establish and uh, integrate an information system in Ukraine, such as the Eurosur system. Uh, this uh, system, in order to exchange information between uh, IBM uh, subject in uh, real time, such a system will significantly improve uh, the level to. Uh, border security and help to use our enable force and uh, facilities more uh, re relation. It is also advisable to create a system in Ukraine similar to the Schengen information system. And um, uh, under the conditions of the information society, uh, the state bodyguard service uh, are a specific and necessary tool that enable managers at all levels to use analytical uh, products to make uh, adequate um, management discussion during border protection. Based on the analysis of research, but, uh, but uh, national uh, scientists and the uh, IAS of the European Border Guard Agency, the implement of the best European practices in Ukraine legislation in uh, appropriate. We consider it uh, appropriate to amend the action plan and include the uh, following items to develop and uh, uh, implement a system uh, for assessing the state of border security of Ukraine, uh, to develop and implement a system uh, similar to the European Border uh, Service Lens System Eurosur and SIS uh, second, and to implement technological uh, solution uh, proposed in the workers. Uh, in our opinion, uh, the proposed, uh, proposed measures will improve the uh, functioning of the State Bodyguard Service uh, uh, system and uh, bring to close it to the requirements of the European Union uh, standard. Thank you very much. Thank you for your report. <clears throat> Has there any questions? Anybody? We haven't. So uh, then uh, I think uh, my report is the last one. So I will try to be short and uh, not to take a lot of time. Um, to thank the organization for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this conference and uh, to present our uh, report, which we uh, prepare uh, with eager uh, 
Pshanovsky and me, Ganna Sopko from I'm from Odessa State University and he's from Polis Academy uh, <coughs> from uh, Bremen, Germany. Uh, I want to present the topic of the report which called the criminological and criminal uh, problems of punishment for domestic violence, theoretical practice and judicial aspects. I will not delay you with my speech, so I will focus only on the concept, the general consequences. Um, the article is devoted to, to the analysis of criminological issues in uh, relation to the conditions and causes that uh, contribute the emergence of domestic violence as well as the victimological components of the antisocial phenomenon. The sex and the characteristics of victims and for domestic violence were analysis. Based on this, the prejudicial issues relate to the refusal of victim and further procedures by law uh, enforcement agencies of the person who committed the uh, criminal offenses were analyzed. Uh, then uh, we go to uh, see the um, statistics from uh, uh, where we can uh, compare the convictions of against the article 126 the domestic violence and we saw that the last uh, during the last years the uh, number of uh, convictions uh, increased more than uh, four and a half uh, uh, times so we see and in uh, several uh, regions of Ukraine as Donetsk Kharkiv Kiev, Poltava, the regions which show us that uh, the domestic violence increased um, by 10, 10, 10 times uh, during these years. But uh, nevertheless, that uh, we have the um, we have the criminal court, which can uh, be uh, helpful to, uh, to combat with such and social and social uh, things, but uh, we couldn't uh, combat with such uh, position only by court. That's why we try to analyze the criminological aspects, ethics in degrees of the level of domestic violence. On the first place, we put the uh, unemployment because during so uh, from the um, pandem pandemic. Um, COVID-19, it increased in nine times during, from 2019 till uh, 2021. You can see these uh, figures in our table. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, um, uh, aspect which was analyzed and which is, has um, their on the social uh, things to the domestic violence is migration. We can see that uh, a lot of people come to Ukraine, but the age of these people is from 15 to 24 years. And the numbers of citizens live, living urban and urban areas is uh, uh, 26,798 people who uh, went from our country to another country. The most uh, popular countries for these people who live in our uh, country is Poland and uh, uh, Russian Federation and the age of them is from 20 to 39. And this is because of the previous table which show us that the unemployment uh, um, figure is raised every year. And uh, the next the last, uh, the last uh, which was analyzed uh, with the criminologic aspect is urbanization. If we can see that our village uh, destroyed and uh, a lot of people uh, moved from, uh, uh, from the village to uh, big cities of Ukraine or for abroad. And the person who can uh, work is the man from 20 to 49 years. They try to find the place where, when, where they can realize there and find the job where it can uh, help them in their problems with the money. And uh, because of this situation, the family, which uh, the uh, social economic uh, 
situation in these uh, families is not good. It uh, makes the straight, uh, straight uh, features, which we can see that this uh, um, may uh, uh, give us the such number of domestic. Uh, the next table is show us show us the reg region, uh, the regions and the victimological uh, victimological slide where we can see the wife is 33 uh, from the um, I will tell that we have the convictions of 231 um, cases. But in 102 cases in 2019, there was agreement with uh, the victim and with the um, person who made the domestic violence. I couldn't I, uh, tell that he is a, a really bad person, but uh, the situation in the family began uh, such things. And uh, the wife is 33, as you see, the roommate is 25, and the children only three mothers of them is 32. Uh, I think that the um, uh, rate and the number of children is not correct actually because they couldn't um, make the uh, they couldn't tell about this violence that's why the number is not so big as the adult people but uh, nevertheless we saw that the women is uh, the victim part of the domestic violence uh, as the big problem of punishment for domestic violence, as we can see in this uh, table, as uh, that's uh, the imprisonment uh, is only five from uh, all people. Another takes the another punishment like the uh, public workers. The main you can see 86 uh, conventions is um, public workers, but then the person is still with their family and he can. Uh, do these uh, things or make such uh, um, emotional stress and press and abuse to this uh, victim part of the family. Uh, that's why um, we have uh, for our decision that we have the problems uh, in uh, punishment and uh, um, because the this person is used to live together after after court, after punishment, that's, way, that's why we think the decision regarding to Levchuk is already a precedent that the judges will not be able to uh, concern and they will force us to apply the practice of eventing a domestic offer from common uh, pro uh, property when they committing domestic violence. So we think that it will be a good um, precedent for uh, for convention for domestic violence. So, and the conclusion of my report is that uh, based on this analysis material, it should be emphasized that Ukraine has embarked on the part of legal solutions to the problem of domestic violence, but so far as the social, economical, legal fields, there is no uh, inconsistency of the problems uh, continues. Let's hope that we measure takes uh, while we have positive effects of these statistics and we can uh, fight against these uh, unsocial uh, incidents. Thank you for your attention and do you have any questions? I have a question. My name is Piotr Vladimir. If you are not against? Yes, of course. Uh, the question is, you represented uh, the statistics of some years and you have pointed out that there was a tremendous growth of such crimes as domestic violence. Definitely something like that happened, but also there is another addition because uh, initially, in pre previous years, our police had a pol policy not to react on domestic violence that much. And just maybe because of that, now they are registering much more than it was before. Uh, do uh, you follow me? Uh, yes, of course. But I want to say to you that the uh, changes in our uh, in our court is uh, became from you know, 2017. So I take the 2019 and 2020. You know the time for where was the pandemic, and but the court we have already from 2017. 
Definitely, but the, the reaction of police is a bit slow, they're not doing immediately. But on the other point, the, um, in the, the study you have done is really important. And despite having more, have a less number of, the, of domestic violence, we should have zero. And that's, uh, I, with both hands, I am uh, greeting you with your studies. Thank you. You know, the, we have the police officers, uh, which called uh, this pilot, um, type of uh, police, which called Palina, who is working during 19 and 2021 20, year, and uh, we have the survey of them, and they give the the statistics we take from them too when we work with them. So, um, um, my if you will interesting, you can uh, uh, learn my report. There's a big. Uh, um, big our research, which consists of judges uh, of court uh, precedents, which uh, should be um, known and taken part when you find the conclusion in the court. But we have no time for this. But I was the great pleasure. We'll speak to you after if you will have time for this. With my, with my pleasure. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Prevention and your former format of uh, prophylactic activities with children. Mykola Veselov and uh, Sergei Vitvitsky, Donetsk Law Institute. The, uh, the state of juvenile delinquency has been and still remains a uh, joint problem for Ukraine. The average number of the minors who have uh, committed criminal offenses during the last five years uh, is almost uh, 3,500 uh, cases. However, besides the prosecution, there are different ways of uh, dealing with uh, minor offenders. Just the purpose of this study is uh, to determine the ability and uh, effectiveness of uh, the internet and uh, mobile application capacity in the field of juvenile prevention. Today, access to the internet enable, uh, enables a new form of uh, virtual communication and uh, leads to the formation of uh, a specific media culture among uh, adolescents. According to the International Research uh, Project, uh, EACPAD, in 2019, only 6.7% uh, of uh, soft uh, adolescents in Ukraine uh, did not use social network. This situation creates a serious uh, threat to children's information security. The police must uh, monitor uh, internet content to uh, identify, uh, identify them as well as uh, focus the efforts of uh, naturalism mentioned uh, threat use in the internet to prevention uh, illegal acts by the minor. Preventive uh, material designed to be post of the internet can provide children with uh, necessary tools to assess external potential risk or project uh, conquestions of their own action. In addition uh, to training guidelines and uh, recommendation from the police on the danger to children, the parents and other social subjects of uh, control, this should be information on the most uh, disturbing uh, practices that are speeding, including through the internet, such as sexting, bullying, fraud, etc. There is a necessity of uh, raise uh, children's uh, awareness of the algorithm for uh, the action if uh, they are already in conflict with the law, the uh, types and uh, condition of alternative uh, measures of juvenile justice ways to involve uh, minor into illegal active etc. Active use of the internet and mobile research uh, should be were widespread among uh, individual prevention measures with the children for on prevention, register, uh, registration, and the police department. The uh, uh, starting from September 2020, the project of individual preventive activity with the use of uh, mobile application was tested with children 
uh, registered in Kovirich City. The Viber application uses became the uh, participants of a spe uh, special chat that allowed to, uh, quick bringing of necessary information to the group member from administrators, uh, sharing links to useful uh, sites, uh, creating service to check uh, recommended preventive material for review questionnaires. It should be noted that uh, 38% uh, of children should uh, shift activity in participation as a member of this project. Moderator activity should be 29%, uh, minimum activity 21%, no activity at all 12%. Among the advantages of the project, uh, respon uh, respondents identified efficiency in uh, providing information and ease of uh, perception, uh, live feedback with the uh, project administrators as the opportunity to ask questions and uh, head answers, expansion of uh, communicative uh, connections uh, among views without excessive uh, personalization, group opportunity to discuss some typical problem of uh, adolescence uh, or social conformation. Anonymity in questionnaires, some uh, participants even noted a uh, sense or moral support. Among the uh, disadvantages, uh, there was the dependence of the quality of the mob, uh, mobile internet, the general nature of uh, preventive material without uh, taking into account specific of the social micro environment of individuals, uh, the schedule of uh, mandatory video conference meeting through Google Meet is not uh, always convenient for uh, participants and so on. In general, according to the uh, result of anonymous, uh, anonymous uh, survey, this form of uh, preventive activity was uh, positively perceived by 62% uh, of uh, project participants, satisfactory 24%, unsatisfactory 2%, no participation in uh, the survey, 12%. Trust. The effect of uh, naturalizing the harmful effect of uh, negative social factors and uh, the formation of uh, acceptability of the rules of law and morality of social behavior uh, for children of risk groups can be achieved through prevention uh, content, which in uh, its minding the specific of children's environment can be posted onto the internet, mobile phone application in various decision and uh, software formats. Thanks for attention. Thank you for your presentation. Has anyone questions to our reporter? Uh, then uh, may I introduce the next report uh, which made by Lilia Veselova and Tatiana Rukonenko, ensuring the stability of Ukrainian cyber security. Thank you. Veselova Lilia uh, from Odessa State University of Interim Affairs and Tatiana Rukonenko, Donetsk Club Institute. My talk is about ensuring the stability of Ukraine's cybersecurity system in the current context. Our sphere of life is covered by information technologies, information and telecommunication systems, and victims of hackers and become not only people, but also the whole state. That is why cybersecurity is one of the main problems, not only in Ukraine, but in the whole world. Thus, the issue of national security in general, in particular its information component, requires the formation of a security environment and sustainability of society. Only for the last months, according to the operative information of the State Special Communication Service for the Protection of State Information uh, <coughs> Resources, more than 
26 million suspicions events have been registered by the cyber protection system of state information <coughs> resources and critical infrastructure at monitoring facilities and more than 70,000 of attacks of various country counts. which the system of secures access of government agencies to the internet blocked. The vast majority are application level network attacks. For network attacks, the main factor is the object of attacks, such as attacks on tools, control systems, network, main equipment. To protect important business information as well as information about customers and other stakeholders in the financial sector. It is advisable to use methods of analysis and risk management in banking systems to ensure the security of banking operation on the Internet. Researchers also consider it necessary to develop a methodology for localizing applied level cyber attack by the artifacts for use in forensic research. The second place in terms of quantity is occupied by attacks such as harvest attack. One of the mo most effective tools for protecting corporate mail from BEC scams is the cloud service to protect the company's mail traffic says security solution, Panda called mail protection, a kind of a mail firewall might protect all types of threats and attacks through corporate mail. The principle of operation is as follows. Then a DHA attack is detected. The IP address used by the suspicious sender becomes temporarily banded and excluded from the allowed traffic, including the traffic that may seem legitimate. Among the statistics on the website of the State Special Service from the Protection of State Information Resources are also some figures on the DOS attacks the vast majority of which relate to the web processes of the Office of the President of Ukraine and the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine. One of the main tasks to prevent or reduce the impact of cyber attacks on information systems is to monitor the state of network equipment and the ability to support network infrastructure during critical situation in working condition. Since October 2020, the government computer emergency response team of Ukraine Sergio has registered and processed more than 35,000 cyber incidents. The majority of incidents concerns the distribution of malicious software. Among the methods of cyber incident monitoring, a network-centric method of cyber incident monitoring has been developed and is used. It allows to in identify the most important object of protection and to predict the category of cyber incident that may occur as a result of cyber attack and thus criticality. It is worth mentioning among the effective practices of foreign countries' statistical methods. Methods of statistical analysis have different interpretation based on different dynamics of network traffic characteristics. They do not require constant updating of databases, which greatly simplify the maintenance of the system. They can detect unknown attacks. Ensuring the stability of the state should be settled by solving strategy and critical problems of cyber security, critical infrastructure and strengthening the stability of society as a whole. Thank you for your additional. Thank you, Lilia. Any questions? We have no questions. So we go at this stage. I would like to introduce the Ludmila 
Valakin Aholanet and Ivan Balakin selecting uh, selecting in in uh, innovative approaches to teaching English to law students via questionnaire analysis. Thank you. We couldn't hear you, but your presentation is uh, uh, on the screen. Ludmila, we couldn't hear you. I'm sorry, we, uh, could you hear me? We couldn't hear your presentation. Maybe something wrong with your microphone. We will stop now and we will go to the next report. And after you will check your uh, microphone, we will return to you. Thank you very much. So the next one, the next one is uh, Volodymyr, Volodymyr Marchenko and Ala Dombrovska on determining the legal nature of smart contracts. To thank the organization for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this conference and uh, to present our uh, report, which we uh, prepare uh, with Igor uh, Shanovsky and me, Ganna Sopko from I'm from Odessa State University, and he's from Polis Academy, uh, <clears throat> from uh, Bremen, Germany. Uh, I want to present the topic of the report, which called the criminological and criminal uh, problems of punishment for domestic violence, theoretical practice and judicial aspects. I will not delay you with my speech, so I will focus only on the concept, the general consequences. Um, the article is devoted to, to the analysis of criminological issues in uh, relation to the conditions and causes that uh, contribute the emergence of domestic violence as well as the victimological components of the antisocial phenomenon. The sex and the characteristics of victims and uh, domestic violence were analysis. Based on this, the prejudicial issues relate to the refusal of victim and further procedures by law uh, enforcement agencies of the person who committed the uh, criminal offenses were analyzed. Uh, then uh, we go to uh, see the um, statistics from uh, uh, where we can uh, compare the convictions of against the article 126 the domestic violence and we saw that the last uh, during the last years the uh, number of uh, convictions uh, increased more than four and a half uh, uh, times so we see and in uh, several uh, regions of Ukraine as Donetsk Kharkiv Kiev, Poltava, the regions which show us that uh, the domestic violence increased um, by 10, 10, 10 times uh, during these years. But uh, nevertheless, that uh, we have the um, we have the criminal court, which can uh, be uh, helpful to uh, combat with such and social and social uh, thing, but uh, we couldn't uh, combat with such uh, position only by courts. That's why we try to analyze the criminological aspects, ethics in degrees of the level of domestic violence. On the first place, we put the uh, unemployment because during so uh, from the um, pandem pandemic. Um, COVID-19, it's increased in nine times during, from 2019 till uh, 2021. You can see these uh, figures in our table. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, 
uh, aspect which was analyzed and which is, has um, their on the social uh, things to the domestic violence is migration. We can see that uh, a lot of people come to Ukraine, but the age of these people is from 15 to 24 years. And the numbers of citizens live, living urban and urban areas is uh, uh, 26,798 people who uh, went from our country to another country. The most uh, popular country for these people who live in our uh, country is Poland and uh, uh, Russian Federation. And the age of them is from 20 to 39. And this is because of the previous table which show us that the unemployment uh, figure is raised every year. And uh, the next the last, uh, the last uh, which was analyzed uh, with the criminologic aspect is urbanization. If we can see that our village uh, destroyed and uh, a lot of people uh, moved from, uh, uh, from the village to uh, big cities of Ukraine or for abroad. And the person who can uh, work, it's the man from 20 to 49 years, they try to find the place where, when, where they can realize there and find the job where it can uh, help them in their problems with the money. And uh, because of this situation, the family, which uh, the uh, social economic uh, situation in these uh, families is not good, it uh, makes this straight, uh, straight uh, features which we can see that this uh, uh, may uh, uh, give us the such number of domestic. Uh, the next table is show us show us the region, uh, the regions and the victimological uh, victimological slide where we can see the wife is 33 uh, from the um, I will tell that we have the convictions of 231 um, cases, but in 102 cases in 2019, there was agreement with uh, the victim and with the um, person who made the domestic violence. I couldn't I, uh, tell that he is a, a really bad person, but uh, the situation in the family began uh, such things. And uh, the wife is 33, as you see, the roommate is 25, and the children on the three mothers of them is 32. Uh, I think that the um, uh, rate and the number of children is not correct, actually, because they couldn't um, make the they couldn't tell about this violence, that's why the number is not so big as the adult people. But uh, nevertheless, we saw that the women is uh, the victim part of the domestic violence. But, uh, as the big problem of punishment for domestic violence, as we can see in this uh, table, as uh, that's uh, the imprisonment uh, is only five from uh, all people. Another take the another punishment like the uh, public workers. The main you can see 86 uh, conventions is um, public workers. But then the person is still with their family and he can uh, do the uh, things or make such uh, um, emotional stress and press and abuse to this uh, victim part of the family. Uh, that's why um, we have uh, for our decision that we have the problems uh, in uh, punishment and uh, um, because the, this person is used to live together after, after court, after punishment. That's, way, that's why we think the decision regarding to Levchuk is already a precedent that the judges will not be able to uh, concern and they will force us to apply the practice of eventing a domestic offer from common 
property when they committing domestic violence. So we think that it will be a good um, precedent for uh, for convention for domestic violence. So and the conclusion of my report is that uh, based on this analysis material, it should be emphasized that Ukraine has embarked on the part of legal solutions to the problem of domestic violence, but so far as the social, economical, legal field, there is no uh, inconsistency of the problems uh, continues. Let's hope that we measure takes uh, while we have positive effects of these statistics and we can uh, fight against this uh, unsocial uh, incident. Thank you for your attention and do you have any questions? I have a question. My name is Piotr Vladimir. If you are not against, yes, of course. Uh -huh. great. Uh, the question is: You represented uh, the statistics of some years, and you have pointed out that there was a tremendous growth of such crimes as domestic violence. Definitely, something like that happened. But also, there is another addition, because uh, initially, in the pre previous years, our police had a pol policy not to react on domestic violence that much. And just maybe because of that, now they are registering much more than it was before. Uh, do uh, you follow me? Uh, yes, of course. But I want to say you that the uh, changes in our uh, in our court is uh, became from you know, 2017. So I take the 2019 and 2020. You know the time for where was the pandemic, and but the court we have already from 2017. Mm -hmm. Definitely, but the, the reaction of police is a bit slow, they're not doing immediately. But on the other point, the, um, in the, the study you have done is really important. And despite having more, have a less number of, the, of domestic violence, we should have zero. And that's, uh, I, with both hands, I am uh, greeting you with your studies. Thank you. You know, the, we have the police officers uh, which called uh, this pilot um, type of uh, police, which called Palina, who is working during 19 and 2021 20, year, and uh, we have the survey of them, and they give the the statistics we take from them too when we work with them. So, um, um, my if you will interesting, you can uh, uh, learn my report. There's a big. Uh, um, big our research, which consists of judges uh, of court uh, precedents, which uh, should be um, known and taken part when you find the conclusion in the court. But we have no time for this. But I was the great pleasure. will speak to you after if you will have time for this. With my, with my pleasure. Great. Thanks. Thank you.